Welcome to our fourth module in our series of mega events about World's Fairs, where we talk about Milan Expo 2015 and take a visit to the fair itself. First, a little about the host city. So Milan has a long tradition as an industrial, financial and design centre in northern Italy. So it is a, a well-known, well-identified city to begin with. As many cities do, using a World's Fair or a mega event is a way to further raise its global profile and to establish its identity and any new directions it wishes to seek. Expo 2015 is located next to the trade fair grounds in the northwestern part of the city. The Expo process is really one about city branding, of the identity of the city becoming globally known. In such a competitive marketplace, there are many cities that are seeking visibility. They're trying to attract investment, to attract tourists, and to promote exports. As a city brand, Milan has some positive and some negative perceptions to manage, and the Expo is a good way to try and shape perceptions of the city. Now, whether or not the perceptions of a city are true, what is important is how people believe the city to be. And it is important, therefore, to use an event to try to shape those perceptions into the brand image that you want for your city. So Simon Anholtz has done a lot of work on city and country brands, and for him, the practice of applying brand strategy and other marketing techniques and disciplines to the economic, social, political, and cultural development of cities, regions, and countries captures the process that Milan will undergo as it offers Expo 2015. A place brand can be a, a symbol, name, design, or any way that communicates a place's identity and is recalled by the public. Expo 2015 has very effectively used its logo of Expo and 2015 superimposed. This symbol, this image is seen in many places. It's on aircraft for airlines, it's on public transport, it's on everything to do with the Expo. So it's a very effective brand that is being placed on the image of the event, as well as extending further into the promotion of the city. City branding is also a way that you can make your city different from some of its competitors and provide a uniform way that the products of the city can be easily recognized. In a 2009 study of Milan, uh, De Carlo, Canali, Pritchard and Morgan looked at how people saw Milan's image. Among the challenges they saw was that the public felt that the city lacked identity and were not really aware of the cultural and historic assets of the city. There was a sense that it was expensive, uh, a grey, perhaps industrial environment, and more of a business city than a tourist destination. So knowing this, there is a foundation of what the city needs to do to change perceptions. But there are also some positives. Uh, the city was seen as having a, a young and dynamic personality and many strengths in food and design. So this type of analysis is very useful when a city undergoes a city branding strategy. It needs to build on the hidden assets and also to counter some of the perhaps negative perceptions of the city. An expo is one way of many that can be harnessed to try to change how a city is seen and a way to promote a city brand. So let's talk about the background of Expo 2015. Uh, Milan does have a history of expos and trade fairs, but most of them took place in the late 19th and early 20th centuries and were located in the city centre. It also has a current tradition of trade shows associated with design and fashion industries. 
Milan also has a lot of experience handling crowds, large-scale events, usually with Design Industries Design Week. So it's a city with experience when it comes to managing the logistics of a mega event. So Milan had thought of an expo for many years and eventually established a bid committee in 2006, although by the time the committee was created, many of the plans were already established. It is a partnership not just of the city, but also the Lombardy region that surrounds it, and also the Chamber of Commerce for Milan. The challenge for Expo 2015 was that it was proposed and planned at a time of economic growth, and yet it had to be paid for and operated in the recession that followed. So this often happens to cities in that they propose a mega event in good economic times, yet must offer it in poor economic times. On the positive side, a mega event can be a way to provide economic stimulus and job growth at a time when the economy is not progressing quickly. So the bid was initiated through its committee. It was presented to the BIE in 2007, and the Expo was awarded in 2008, leaving the city seven years for preparation. The strengths of the bid were the theme Feeding the Planet Energy for Life, as it referenced both food and sustainability issues. It received government support, and it was an accessible location at the Milan Trade Fair site that was well established to handle visitors. Some of the weaknesses was a lack of strategic vision and post-event use. Now this could be good for an expo, but what is good for an expo is not necessarily good for the future city. The theme of Feeding the Planet Energy for Life was well chosen because it combines popular themes around food, culture, and sustainability. So the theme is obviously going to be attractive to the public. There are a number of ways that these themes are addressed uh, through national pavilions offered by countries that often include a, a restaurant. There are corporate pavilions and also non-governmental organizations. Expo 2015 clustered pavilions around food themes as well, with clusters around topics such as rice or coffee or cereals. The design of the site, which is northwest of the city center, is along classical Roman city lines. There is a cardo, or short north-south access, and a decumanus, which is a long east-west access, around which the fair is organized. Most pavilions are located along the Decumanus, which is a wide shaded walkway that passes the country pavilions. Now this is a departure from past expos when there was a campus arrangement with a pavilion spread across a large area. In the case of Expo 2015, with the Decumanus, every country had a narrow but prominent position along the main east-west axis. In this image you can see the east-west axis and all the countries that front onto this main avenue for the World's Fair. Uh, and this is an image of the Decumanus. It is a broad but often busy and crowded thoroughfare, uh, also shaded from the uh, hot sun in the Melanese summer. But this provides direct access to many of the pavilions, the national pavilions, with some pavilions in the background. This is an example of the country branding, a consistent branding along the Decumanus that shows the location of each country. In this case, the first country being Nepal, as shown by its flag. So what's it like to visit Expo 2015? Well, normally ticket sales are an important source of revenue, and these are promoted months in advance. And as the Expo approaches, prices usually increase. There are a number of types of tickets. There are a season pass, a multi-day ticket, a one-day ticket, 
and an evening ticket. Evening tickets are popular with residents because there are often events at an expo that are attractive to people who can visit after work and on weekends. A one-day ticket to expo purchase now costs 39 euros or around 43 US dollars. Expos have uh, an extensive transit system and the transportation system has been coordinated around visiting Expo. There are special trains and buses and also some parking places, although as it should be, most of the emphasis is on effective public transit as a way to reach the Expo. With well over 100,000 visitors on a quiet day and many more on a busy day, the logistics are considerable for both the expo and the visitor to navigate. Once at the site, visitors need to pass through security screening, ticket scanning, and so at times it can take an hour of walking and waiting to reach the first pavilion if you arrive during a busy time. Uh, this is an example of a busy time at Expo 2015, lines to go through airport type security systems and then entering the grounds. Now Milan has produced several changes in common elements of, of World's Fairs. Uh, this expo seems to have fewer rides and experiences than past fairs. There is less merchandising and it has even stopped the practice of pavilions offering to stamp souvenir passports. At past expos, visitors would purchase souvenir passports and at each pavilion there would be an ink stamp that they could use to stamp their passport to show that they had visited the National Pavilion. What Expo 2015 does offer is innovative architecture and a serious exploration of food and culture with many different food offerings from the different countries and different organizations. Now in our next section of this module in part two, we visit some of the pavilions and do an in-depth look at the US Pavilion at Expo 2015.